So I look at a lot of book covers. Gee, Captain Obvious over here. I know. I know. But I've noticed that there is a wide variety in quality for book covers out there. And in this video, I by no means am trying to call out or praise or disrespect various artists. I'm more particularly looking at various trends and styles and trying to judge what works, what people enjoy, and what completely fails. So I'm even going to give fair shots to various art styles that I don't particularly love because I understand the appeal for others and I'm more just going to give advice on how to make it work better and present itself in a cleaner manner because I spend hours looking at bookshelves and I'm a pretty good judge of what jumps out and what looks like a muddled mess. And this video is brought to you by Skillshare. Look at this pretty boy over here. Mwah, Skillshare. It's an online learning, you know the next word out of my mouth, community where you can go on and develop your own skills every day. For less than the cost of most streaming services, less than $10 a month if you use the annual option, you can have access to so many courses to improve yourself, learn things, and get started on a new path of creativity, career, what have you. Have you checked out Marie Andrews' self-discovery through drawing? Because I'm now improving myself and discovering me through what I'm drawing. I'm pretty choosy nowadays with what sponsors I let on the channel. Skillshare is definitely gonna be ones I'm forever okay with because it's a product that just like you can't even say it's bad. It's absolutely a resource for self-exploration, improvement, and just a way to stay productive in these crazy times. So if you'd like to start down a new path, unlock some new skills and abilities like a D&D &D character, go ahead and click that link in the description. The first 1,000 people to give it a go will get two free months of Skillshare and I'm just, that's that's a that's a great option, that's a deal. Back to the video. Now, the first thing I'm going to talk about here, and this is one that I really wanna get into because there's controversial thoughts. The art that tries to look photorealistic. This can be done quite well. The example I have up here, and I'm gonna put a bigger image on the screen now, is the promise of blood. I believe the reason this one specifically works so well at actually being photorealistic looking art and yet still really capturing an audience's attention is the remarkable, incredible attention to detail. Very few people I know, even the ones who really do not like this more photorealistic approach to art, dislike Promise of Blood's covers. It's one of the best book covers I've ever seen. I think it is gorgeous. On the complete other end of the spectrum, yet still being in a similar style of trying to have the character on the cover look as real as possible, we have the current mass paperback print of Assassin's Apprentice. This, as you're seeing from the art I'm seeing on here, has way less of an appeal, I think, in general, we can agree. Largely, not because the art doesn't look nice. I mean, it's well done art. I certainly couldn't draw anywhere near close to that. But it just in presentation doesn't convey as much information. If you're going to go for this, here is the character in a scene type of style, you have the opportunity to convey so much more information than a lot of other art styles. And if you want to entice a reader to pick up your book, that is a tremendous missed opportunity. Looking at Promise of Blood, the slight blood smears, the ragged look of the character, the room he's in, the way he's holding his rifle and posture, all tell such a grand story that makes me look at this, even though it's not my preferred art style, and love it. This is a story in itself in the art. Meanwhile, Assassin's Apprentice, there's a guy uh, standing his hands on a knife, all right? There's a deer behind him. I can't really tell much from that. His posture's very neutral, his expression's neutral, maybe a little bit sour. If you're going to do the approach where your art is trying to look as real as it can, do not miss out on that opportunity. Tell a story or tell part of the story of your book in this art because this is an absolutely phenomenal representation of what happens in the text for Promise of Blood in terms of some themes and general tone, character resolutions and involvement. Meanwhile, Assassin's Apprentice, I there's a guy with a with a 
with a cloak. The next one I'm gonna to touch on, I'm just gonna directly say, I get why if there's an adaptation of the book, you do the print where you take a screenshot from the adaptation and you print out new copies of the book with that. I understand, I, I, I personally do not own a single book with one of those covers because I think they are repugnant. <laughs> but I will say if you're going to do that style, don't do a random screen grab from the adaptation, which I've seen before, and make it your cover just because it's an iconic scene. And do take the time to actually put together an original shot because it's higher effort. It shows some level of caring rather than just like skimming through footage and being like, that looks good, grab it, put it on. You can even do that, but blend it with other scenes, add something to it so it's not just the most lazy thing possible. I don't know almost, I actually don't know anyone who goes out of their way to buy the screen grab of the adaptation covers. So I don't, I'm not gonna spend much time on this. Moving on. Now I wanna give general advice to having a clean versus chaotic cover. Because you can have an action scene or something on the cover that is still rather clear in what is happening. I think a very good example of this is this Forgotten Realm book's The Two Swords. There's a lot happening here. We have Drist, the Dark Elf, attacking and fighting multiple orcs very chaotic scene. It's literally death happening. This is a big deal. Yet you can glance at this cover and understand this scene. Nothing in this is not communicated clearly despite how much is happening. That is good. I'm not knowledgeable enough in art to get into the exact fine details of why. I think it comes down to clearer lines, playing with different characters standing out better and not blending into the background. But I'm not gonna hold up a specific example because I don't want to call out someone for creating bad art in this specific sense. But it's on the artist here in a more heavy way. And you need to make your characters stand out, their movements seem motivated, and not blend in with the environment around them. That will hurt it. And actually kind of makes it just less, like in, in a mental sense when you look at it, less actually absorbed into you. And so this big selling point, which if we're being honest, covers of books are big selling points, then you're failing. You're failing as the presenter of the story at enticing a reader because you're not making an impression on them. They just see colors. Maybe they'll pick out a character or two and move on. Whereas if I look at this one, despite it being like 90% brown, if you look closely, there's play going on with the light. There's a little bit of blood. There's movement and motion blur, but also clarity. All of that comes together for my brain to really feel like I'm witnessing a scene. That is important. Now, the next point I want to hit on is branding. It is so important throughout a series or the lifespan of what is the you know legacy of your story to maintain a specific look and style. It's okay to generationally evolve, that's fine. The best example of that possible is Lord of the Rings. From the original covers, which this isn't actually the original cover, they changed it slightly, but this is distinct, this is Lord of the Rings, to the newer prints. There is something about this that just says it's Lord of the Rings. They have done an extraordinary job of communicating with their audience what exactly the look and feel of a Lord of the Rings cover will be, and you will not forget it. Even in the more middle prints that happened, you can recognize Lord of the Rings art. It just, as a fantasy fan, you're going to know it. They have an advantage there with just the sheer recognition value of, you know, what Lord of the Rings is and how much the art is examined and shown around. So let's go with a slightly smaller example. I said slightly because it's still a big deal, and that's going to be the Dresden Files. I, you know, I love the Dresden Files. I don't love the covers. I think they're good. Uh, they represent the series fine, but they're very often kind of muddled. And actually it's kind of an example of what I'm talking about where often you can look at it and it'll take you a moment to really process what's happening in the image because it's just kind of blending too much as opposed to that Forgotten Realms cover. And that Forgotten Realms cover has just as much brown as this Dresden cover has black, yet I still get way more information faster from that Forgotten Realms cover. Now, Dresden Files has improved when they're playing with cover a bit more in this latest entry from Peace Talks. I find this to be a much more engaging and enticing piece of art for the eyes, and it's because they've decided to evolve with color. Yet Jim Butcher has 
also maintained a specific look here, and it's an obvious one of having his character to the forefront in focus looking directly at the camera, that is consistent with the Dresden Files vibe overall. So he's able to improve the art style, get something out there that's more enticing for his audience while maintaining that branding. Very important and not something to forget. Now we have uh, the hyper stylized art, and I have a hard time finding bad examples of hyper stylized art because I genuinely think it is the best move to make. If you want to have something that's going to grab your reader's attention, doing something that is very recognizably your cover, this is not like any of the other art that's on the shelves is maybe the best way to do it. So many examples of this working well. The Master and Margarita, look at this cover. That hits you. This is something that looks different. It also presents the absurdity of the story extremely well. And that's another crucial point to hit on, which I can't believe I have to say, but I do have to say it. Make sure your art actually represents your story. I'm blown away by how often I uh, do come across art that's just completely misrepresenting. This stands out on the shelf because it has a distinct look. Another great example would be Kings of the Wild. The artist who did this amazing job of bringing this art to the forefront. It jumps out on you. It has this like stylized painted appeal while also conveying so much characters and some like minimal here on the, there's not overly designed like detail, but it just jumps, it works. Uh, I also think another really good example of this is Scythe. Uh, there's clearly some interesting artistic choices happening. This, if you go into Barnes and Noble in the YA section, in my opinion, is one of the books that stands out on the shelf the most. And then, of course, we have Joe Abercrombie's recent uh, endeavors with his new First Law trilogy. And once again, so well, so well done at trans at communicating a tone. Uh, as w I, I look at this cover and I get the tone of the story I'm about to go into. 100,000%. It also is one of these covers that the closer you get to it and the more details you pick up on, and it'll just strike you again and again. There's like a re-look value here. Now, I am going to say, I'm not a big fan of the first First Law uh, Trilogy main printing covers. That like pe parchment with blood and knives on it, it seemed rather generic. It never stood out to me. I much prefer this popping colors appeal, even though it's kind of just these basic colors of red, black, and white. This pops in a way because I believe the utilization of color is stronger than if you just have that beige apartment that was really prevalent uh, with the last first law books and some blood and some tools. It just didn't jump for me. I also think a great example of having a specific art style that's going to resonate, communicate your story. I, I can't really think of a better example than uh, Wizard of Earthsea in this specific edition. I think this is maybe the best representation of text, tone, everything all coming together, standing out in terms of style. It is gorgeous than this Wizard of Earthsea cover. It conveys an epicness to the reader. It also seems very accessible and appealing to kids, which because Wizard of Earthsea is for all ages, that absolutely applies. The artist who's behind this killed it, knocked it out of the park, and I would say this is one of the best all-around examples of a book cover just doing its job. It's not the most beautiful of all time, I'm not making that case. It's not the greatest art I've ever seen, but certainly, justifiably, a extraordinarily solid representation of what this collection of Earthsea is. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the fact that minimal covers are extremely popular right now from the UK Mistborn to it's Stephen King, all these things. People really like these more minimal covers currently. A splash of some kind of art and then just the text to communicate what exactly the story is. It's a trend that I don't hate because again, it does pop. Now the problem is though, we're seeing so many of these minimal covers being printed out from everything from Poppy War to more Sanderson books that they're starting to blend, especially with the strong prevalence of white. We're starting to see just like a lot more white on these shelves. So I actually think, yes, while well, they stood out before, they're becoming so popular, they might start blending in with the other ones that are now riding on that train, so. Maybe choose another art style, I don't know. Also, I wasn't the biggest fan of the series, uh, but Victoria Schwab's Shades of Magic series extraordinarily stand out on the shelves because of her just, just orange, black kind of appeal. Those aren't colors that are super used very well often, so you could do something as simple as that to jump out on the shelf. So now I'm just gonna get into books that have 
slight errors, things you need to look out for. Now, another cover I actually really enjoy is The Forgetting Moon by Brian Lee Durfee. One of the few problems is I find the text to be a bit too distracting. It's so huge and it's this glossy, bold, uh, appearance that it actually kind of overwhelms the outstanding art underneath. I don't dislike this cover at all, but it's just a little too distracting for me. It's a nitpick almost, but yes, you also need to be extremely careful with text choices and placement. I'm always advocating for smaller text. Let the art show because the biggest thing that's going to catch that person's eye is the art. And then you know, use your spine to have the big old, okay, here's what it is, the title, the author. I think uh, a great example of this actually is Christopher Paolini's gorgeous cover for To Sleep in a Sea of Stars, where we actually do have rather large text, but it's not distractingly overlaid the art. He has his name still, you know, big enough for the successful author creds along the bottom, but you see first and foremost, this outstanding depiction of a person floating adrift in space, which is something that hits without question. You didn't think I was gonna do this whole video without spanking a book, did you? Now, I also have a big problem with just generic art with text. Stephen King is extremely guilty of this. Stop it, stop it. Your stories are some of the most impactful and iconic of all time. They deserve better than generic road with shadow. No, it's just to me, this comes across as almost just borderline. Like, did they try that hard? Because it's a photo, It's I think it's an actual photo of a road with some rather poorly in terms of their scale photoshopped in shadows. That's immediately telling me, like if I look closely at those shadows, they don't make sense in their size and their origin and their placement. I don't like it. So put in that effort is another piece of advice. And then controversially, because I know a lot of people love this one, my final criticism is going to be of The Expanse's, maybe the best titled book I've come across in ages, Leviathan Wakes. God, that title is good. Oh, that title is so good. And the cover is good. I like this cover, but the lines aren't hard enough and the shadows get too deep that I actually find it a bit hard to tell what's going on. And I still, even after reading it, I'm like, are these two ships that have run into each other? And okay, here's, we. okay, I'm not gonna get into spoilers, but like this is, we know this, but the ship itself just looks kind of strange and I find it to be contrasting. Now actually kind of contradicting what I'm saying. I do like this cover. I think it does a good job. I just wish they would like repaint this ship specifically to have a little bit more, uh, distinction between its lines. And that's something where, okay, maybe I'm just spending too much time looking at and talking about book covers at this point. I, I have my own style preferences. I don't love the photorealistic unless it's extremely well done. I am always advocating for go for a new art style like Kings of the Wild did or Scythe does, or not new, but one that's going to pop and represent some tones and themes from your story well. I think Scythe does that extremely well with that kind of rigid, hard lines representing, at least in my overanalyzing brain, the society these characters are living in, or Kings of the Wild having that more minimal detail with the characters kind of standing out, popping from the background, showing like, this is a story about this band. The focus is on these characters without just being generic, standing around boringness because there's that overlay of distinct art. And what this boils down to is uh, don't be lazy. Because if you've noticed, almost all my criticisms are about like, you did something, but you didn't try hard enough. I think Royal Assassin might be the best example where I do like the art. I think the artist is talented. I just wish there was more detail. And with the previous covers of Assassin's Apprentice that have a more distinct look to them, I don't think there's a whole lot of people who are gonna disagree with the idea that it's a step down in the quality and look. And I would just find myself going like, oh, I wanna spend extra money and look a little harder to find those previous printings. And I also think it's important to play with color and maybe just don't buy into this all white trend, pop out with some orange, some maybe deep reds, whatever you can do. Because I know it is important to stand out on that shelf and you can do so without writing a trend. My genuine piece of advice, which after talking to quite a few people, seems to be a bigger issue than you might think is to just put the artist and author directly in contact with each other. Find an artist you really trust if you're a publisher and let them at it. And don't cover up the art with massive ass text. That's, that's kind of a big deal. And trust your artists. I've seen example after example of artists being trusted, given guidelines and returning with some really awesome work. If you give them too much, too much, just hard lines they have to work within and you tell them like, copy this, go after that trend, do whatever, you're not going to stand out because they're, they're already tied down. So if you let them do something that represents the material with advice from the author and utilizes their own strengths as an artist, 
you can have something truly extraordinary on the shelf that will do the job you're wanting that art to do. Another great example of text being prominent enough to clearly display, but not covering up the outstanding piece underneath. So that was just some rambling thoughts and designing good fantasy covers. I'd love to know yours in the comments down below as well. What are your favorite covers of all time? I know a lot of people are gonna bring up Priory of the Orange Tree and I don't blame you. I just didn't have it here, unfortunately. Uh, I think it's still in a box somewhere. <laughs> but like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. And have a good one, y'all. Peace.